Oh, it's good to be with you, but um, sadly, it's not going to be like this now for a few weeks. For those of you who haven't quite picked up Boris's uh, announcement, the government's announcement yesterday of the lockdown uh, does include churches, does include um, all places of worship now have to um, shut down for acts of congregational worship and other reasons as well there are some minor exceptions so funerals can still be held in churches uh, but for example weddings are cancelled you can't have a wedding in a church uh, for during this lockdown so friends of ours in fact you will know exactly Lydia Johnson some of you remember Lydia who was did our youth work at um, the church weekend last year she was due to get married on the 14th of November she's getting married this Wednesday so um, after last night they're going to bring a whole wedding forward and set it all up in three days so um so yeah, so it's come as a big blow for a lot of people. And I think we need to um, acknowledge that. This is not a fun time and we're heading into the winter and we're heading into um, the weather less pleasant, queues stood outside rather than the summer where you could take your book with you and a deck chair as you queued in, et cetera, et cetera. That's not gonna be quite so much fun now. Um, people who found it easy to go out for a walk in a park in November that's going to be less attractive it's going to be harder um, so this is it's, it's going to be really hard we knew in many ways it was always to be expected the anticipation of a wave etc etc but nevertheless it is now upon us and certainly for the next for all of November we pray and hope and trust that we will be able to resume some form of in-person worship come uh, December but for now this is it um, and once again, we are called as God's people, as this church, to behave like a church during this time, to continue to behave like Christian people, to behave like a Christian community. Um, and in doing that, not just as a means to support ourselves and members of our own congregation, but dare we say again, as a sign to the world, that God is present amongst his people and God offers redemption and hope to people all around us in a world where the darkness is closing in. Somebody said, as the darkness closes in, don't let it overwhelm you, but light a candle, strike a light, be a sign of another way. And so I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 12. Um, Again, a very familiar passage, unity and diversity in the body. If you've got a Bible to hand at home, you want to grab a Bible. Um, it's not going to come up on the screen, um, but I'll read it to you anyway. So 1 Corinthians 12, beginning at verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts. And of course, he's talking about local churches. He's talking about these communities, these fragile communities of Christians forming in the midst of Roman Empire, fragile, uncertain, not a particularly welcoming environment, quite hostile um, in many ways. For we are many, for, for all its many parts form one body. And so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, young or old, shut in or able to run about, in work, not in work, on the furlough scheme, not on the furlough scheme, savings in the bank, no savings in the bank, anxieties about grandchildren, not got anxieties about grandchildren. One body. And we were all given the one spirit to drink even so, the body is not made up of one part, but thank God, many parts. Now, if the foot should say, by the way, as we read through this, think about who a foot might be at Herne Hill Baptist Church and who an eye might be and uh, so on. For if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. Whether you like it or not, you're part of this body. You cannot declare unilateral independence. You have been joined by Christ, by the Spirit. We are united. This is a supernatural, spiritual miracle that has brought us together. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. 
it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, there's pictures of a gigantic Monty Python-esque eye at that point, where would the sense of hearing be? And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them. You are not here by accident. You do not participate in the life of Herne Hill Baptist Church or whatever church you once were part of or may one day be part of by accident. God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And so therefore the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. The young can say, not say to the old, oh, we don't need you. The old cannot say to the young, oh, we don't need you. The unemployed cannot say to the employed, we need one another. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Because those weaker members of the body are a sign to us of the quality of our love. And the quality of our true Christian commitment to one another. Because we live in a society which celebrates strength and success and power and privilege. That has no time for those who are weak and can't keep up, that are slowing the rest of us down, slowing progress down. The glory of the Christian community is that those who seem to be weaker are utterly indispensable to us. They are prophetic signs sent by God that we might know that we are truly a Christian community. In a world that refuses to embrace the vulnerable and the other and the unknown and the stranger. So the Christian church sets itself apart as a sign of the kingdom of God. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, and that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And so if one part suffers, the rest go, well, tough luck for you. Sucks to be you. Glad I'm not you. The Christian church, if one part suffers, every part suffers. Every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. And this is the glory, glorious truth that holds us together through this time. That invites us to embrace the reality of who we are. Because we live in a world which is skeptical of institutions and communities, which celebrates independence and freedom, success and power, not weakness. And yet the glory of the gospel is that we are all invited in Christ by the Spirit to participate fully in the life of Christ, now poured out upon us by that Spirit, by his Spirit. The great Bible story, the, the story of Scripture begins in Genesis with a garden and God dwelling amongst humankind with Adam and Eve, walking in the garden at peace. And it ends with a city, with God at the center of that city. God again with us, God dwelling amongst his creation, the glorious triumph of his creation, humankind, all of humankind. 
And so this shapes who we are. That every human being is created in equal dignity in the sight of God. But we also know we live in a fallen world. A world that we were created to inhabit. This remains our world. This is, remains the world we were created to live and to dwell in with God. Fallen as it is, broken as it is. The horrific things we've seen on our screens just in these last few days. A pandemic that has shaken all societies in some way or another. Remains the world that God is redeeming. That God one day in Christ will put fully and completely right. That great day of consummation. And so by the spirit, through the glory of the gospel, we've been call together to be a sign and anticipation of that day one day. And God's reign will truly be amongst us all. And so we are a gift one to another. And we are called to serve one another, to embrace one another, to care for one another, to look out for one another. Because in each other we see the presence of God and those so-called weaker members and many, many papers have been written about what that might mean. But they are indispensable and not to be overlooked. Don't you dare at your peril neglect the weaker members amongst us because God has called them indispensable. And so we continue through this time to watch out for one another and to care for one another. To share our suffering and to hold one another. And when one of us can no longer pray, it will be the prayers of others that will keep them and hold them. And when one of us no longer feels able to cope as the winter draws in, it will be those who lift them in prayer and pick up a phone and send them a message and whatever is possible. To know they are being held and being carried through this time. And the annoying thing about the Christian church throughout its history, and particularly in these kind of times, the annoying thing about the church is it didn't just care for its own. But the church has this annoying habit of caring for anybody indiscriminately. having no way of measuring whether they are worthy or not, except that they are created in the image of God and deserving of his love. And so in that way, we become assigned to our communities, to those around us, our friends and our neighbours. Whatever work looks like for us now, whatever retirement looks for us now, whatever school and college look like for us now. First and foremost, the household of God. And then to the ends of the earth, beginning with those around us. So continue to trust in God. Keep the faith. God dwells amongst his people. He has not deserted us. We remain one body in Christ. But this glorious body with all its diversity, reaching out to one another and caring for one another, to sustain one another through this, we will get through this. It will not be easy. But the church through history has demonstrated its resilience in the most testing of times. And there is absolutely no reason why this time will be any different. Because the God who has always held his church continues to hold his church. You remain held by God. May you never doubt that. Even in your darkest moments, may you never doubt you remain held by God. Amen. Amen.